So in this example, ladies and gentlemen, the first thing that we're going to want to do when we're uh, using this is going to create a diagram. All right, and I think it's very helpful when creating a diagram just to make sure that we have everything um, written out there, you know, correctly. So they give us and and again, guys, it doesn't matter what you want to label as your side lengths. I would just arbitrarily, you know, choose A, B, and C, and then say, okay, A is 26.3. degrees. And then A is 7. B is equal to 6. I'll write it like that. B is equal to 6. Now, do you guys see the main important thing to be able to apply the law of sines? All right? The main important thing to be able to apply the law of sines is we have to have we have to have a angle and its opposing side length. Does everybody see how we have that? Since we now have that, we can apply the law of sines. So remember the law of sines was a over sine of a is equal to b over sine of b is equal to c over sine of c. We don't need every single one of these. We only need two ratios to write a proportion. So I'm obviously going to use my ratio of a over sine of a. And then I'm going to want to equate that to what other ratio do I have a value for? b. So we do b over sine of b. I don't need to use the ratio for c. I can figure out c later. Um, so now, let's just plug in the values. And that's basically at least all we're simply doing here. So we're going to have 7 over the sine of 26.3 is equal to 6 over the sine of b. Now, there's a lot of different things you guys could do here. Um, you could easily cross multiply, um, which I know like some of you like love to do and so forth. But in reality, I mean, it's, it's not going to be any different, any um, faster to be doing one way or the other. One way I would do is we can always evaluate this. So I can just take 7 divided by, I want to make sure my calculator is in degree mode, since 26.3 is degrees. So I'm going to do um, divided by the sine of 26.3 degrees, and that's 15.78 um, cents. I'm rounding to the 10th um, decimal. I'm just going to leave it from here. I'm not going to go to 100, so I'm going to go to the 10th. So therefore, that would be 15.8. Now, hopefully, you guys are familiar with solving in this case. And I could go ahead and do the same thing um, if I wanted to. You could use cross multiplication and solve. But hopefully, by this point, since, you guys, since we've been doing problems that are similar to this, you guys would see that this is going to be the same thing when solving for sine of b. So therefore, I have 6 divided by 15.8. And therefore, that's going to be Okay. I'm just trying to do the work a little bit quicker. All I'm doing is getting the sine of b off the denominator by multiplying by the sine of b on both sides. So therefore, I have the sine of b times 15.8 equals 6. And then I divide it by 15.8 on both sides. Does that make sense? OK, so therefore, I have the sine is equal to sine of b is equal to 0.3797 and so forth. Well, again, what are we looking for? We're looking for, when we're looking for sine of b, we're looking for b, which b represents the what? Angle. Angle. So therefore, I need to make sure that I find, um, I need to make sure that when looking for the sine of b, um, uh, sine of b, blah, 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 when I need to find the sine of b, I need to find the inverse. So therefore, I do sine inverse of 0.3797, and that's going to equal b. So now, all I simply do is do sine inverse, sine inverse of, second of my answer, my decimal, and I get 22.3. So now I know that B is 
I could actually probably put these in there, right? Okay, well, if you guys think about this, let's, let's go back. Now, first of all, to find C, there's a couple things I want you guys to understand. To find C, remember a triangle has how many side lengths here? Huh? I'm sorry, a triangle has how many angles? Three. And the sum of all angles have to add up to? 180. So therefore, to find C, all I simply need to do is say 180 minus 26.3 minus 22.3. So I do 180 minus 26.3 minus 22.3. And I get 131.4. Now, does my triangle look like it makes sense for this? No. no, not at all, right? But guys, you're not going to always be able to pick like the perfect triangle. Remember how I gave you guys two examples of triangles, right? I did one that looked like this, and then I did one that looked like that, right? You're not going to be able to guess the right triangle every single time. So therefore, just pick a triangle, whatever else, so you can find the side length, so you can at least visualize something. However, yes, this triangle would not look like this. The triangle would probably look something more like this. Okay. Um, we're not, still not done yet. So we're not done because now we found out the angle of C. So now we can do the law of sines to find the, law, to find the length of C. Okay. So to do that, I'm going to erase this work over here. Just in case I would have made any kind of mistake, I always like to go back and again use my original information and then just do this with C now. So now I'll do another law of sines. So I'll do A over, I'm sorry, let's, yeah, let's do A sine of A is equal to now C over sine of C. Well, now I know what this angle C is. A is 7 over the sine of 26.3 degrees equals C over the sine of C, which is 131.4 degrees. Yes? No? And therefore, again, you guys could do cross multiplication and do all that fun stuff. But when you do cross multiplication or whatever else, you guys get C equals 7 times the sine of 131.4 degrees divided by the sine of 26.3 degrees. So now, all I'm simply going to do is just, again, go in my calculator. I'm going to do 7 times the sine of 131.4. And then I'm going to divide that by the sine of 26.3. And when doing that, I get 11.85. I'm going to round that to the 10th. Um, decimal place would be 11.9. And based on this type of picture, does that kind of would that make sense? Should the, should the largest angle have the largest side across from it? Yes. yes, of course it should, right? So and does the, does the side lengths look correct? Like this isn't, these aren't in like by, these aren't like 5 and 6 and this one's 11,000, right? It makes sense. It fits, right? Yes? So instead of cross multiplying, you did what, what, what was the order you did? I just cross multiplied. I did just cross multiply. I just did it in my head. I mean, I did this times this and that times that. Well, to solve for C, then you have to divide by 26.3 on both sides. right? So I'm just trying to kick in some steps a little bit, because, uh, or just catch up some steps for that. Okay.